This is the kid to to heart. This is the kid Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So you all seem to like my part one that I did about Drag Race icebergs, about Drag Race gossip, drama and some unknown rumours, so I thought I'd make a part two. And if you don't know what an iceberg chart is, make sure you check out part one to find out, plus all the drama that I talked about in that video. And so let's get started and find out about some unknown things about RuPaul's Drag Race. So we're going to start off at the top of the iceberg, which is fake reactions. As we all know, Drag Race is a reality show. So as Tatiana would say, what you see isn't always the truth. But what you may not know is that the contestants are often asked to fake their reactions to things because it looks better on camera. And Trinity the Tuck once talked about this and said that on her season, so on season nine and also All Stars 4 and then eventually All Stars 7, apparently there were a few times where RuPaul would come in and announce the guest judge for that week. And obviously on screen, we always see all of the contestants cheering and going, oh my God, I can't believe it. But Trinity admitted that most of the time, no one knew who any of the guest judges were. And then they would all just kind of not really react. And so the producers would then say, we need you to pretend that you do know who this person is. So they would make the queens then refilm their reactions of being all excited about the guest judges. And this is probably not that surprising, but I thought it was just an interesting thing that Trinity actually shared that this does happen. So moving on next to Jiggly's hotel letter. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know I have talked about this in a few videos. But on season four, you may remember there was the lovable Jiggly Caliente. And in the episode that she went home on, in the Untucked episode, if you watch it, you'll see that Jiggly is obviously really upset and she's crying. And there's a sort of rumor that's not really ever been substantiated, but she's holding a piece of paper in her hand in Untucked. There's a rumor that Jiggly received a checkout letter from the hotel that she and the other contestants were staying at. And apparently that meant according to some people, that Jiggly's elimination was pre-planned because she'd already been checked out of the hotel even before she had done her lip sync. And this would imply as though eliminations are pre-written and predestined before the lip sync even happens. And I don't believe Jiggly has ever confirmed this or anyone else for that matter, but there is a rumor online that apparently there was an edit of that scene during Untucked where Jiggly is crying. And apparently she said something along the lines of, none of you received the letter. And apparently she's holding the letter in her hand, but this whole bit was then cut out of the final broadcast and it only existed on a few platforms and was then removed. And so moving on to the final one on this level is a lifetime supply of makeup. You may remember that on some of the seasons of Drag Race, one of the prizes for the winner was a lifetime supply of makeup. And I guess that doesn't really mean anything, like what is a lifetime supply of makeup? And so it was quite interesting that one time this was talked about by Tyra Sanchez, who won season two, who now goes by the name James Ross. And uh, James said that because apparently NYX Cosmetics, who was the sponsor at the time for the makeup, sent a letter to James after James won saying that they couldn't keep up their end of the bargain. And instead of giving them a lifetime supply, they gave them $10,000 to spend because they calculated that that's what the average person would spend on makeup over their lifetime. Did you get your, your lifetime supply of NYX Cosmetics? Another... <laughs> So uh, before they aired that I was the winner, Nyx sent me a letter uh, and it told me that they were not going to be able to uh, hold up their end of the bargain as long as they thought that they could. A lifetime supply of makeup is uh, $10,000. And I think this is just an interesting fact because on the show, they always kind of make out as though, you know, you get a lifetime supply of makeup with a big chest full of makeup that gets sent to your house or whatever it might be. But in reality, James confirmed that it was actually just $10,000 to spend all at once. And then it's your choice to then keep that makeup and do whatever you want with it over your lifetime. Okay, so moving on to the second tier on the iceberg, we have fake Jasmine Masters. 
So you may remember that Jasmine Masters was on season seven and All Stars 4, and she was also on the Holly Slay Christmas Spectacular. I have talked about this on my channel before, but there was a lot of drama with that Holly Slay Spectacular, in particular between Jasmine and Shangela. And according to Jasmine, Shangela arrived late and was basically being a diva, and Jasmine wasn't having it. So Jasmine actually left and quit halfway through filming and left the set. And this is apparently why Jasmine's confessionals and things aren't really featured very heavily because she left. And so there's a fan theory that because Jasmine was wearing this sort of net bag thing over her head, that in some of the wider shots that happened in the latter part of the episode, which was after Jasmine had quit and left, there's a theory that one of the producers or members of staff put on this net over their head and just pretended to be Jasmine in the background. And in some of the shots, you can kind of see that maybe it does look like that could be true, although this has never actually been confirmed. And one other bit of information about the Holly Slay Spectacular is that after this all happened, Shangela and Jasmine allegedly spoke and Shangela actually explained that her lateness to set, which is what caused Jasmine to react, was actually already sanctioned and approved by World of Wonder, but they just didn't tell the girls that she was going to be late because Shangela was on tour at the time and she was flying in from another place. And that's why all the girls, particularly Jasmine, were annoyed because Shangela was late, although that had already been approved. And on top of that, allegedly, Shangela Angela was also partly late because she was arguing with some of the producers because she was trying to convince them to pay the other queens more money for the time that they had been on set waiting for her. So if that is true, then it would kind of justify why Shangela was late. But I couldn't find any concrete evidence that this is actually true. These are all just rumors. And the next one on this tier is Deja's solo lip sync. I have talked about this in a few videos, but there was a rumor that Deja Sky, who was on season 14, had to do a solo lip sync to a Dua Lipa song on season 14 in the Snatch Game episode, which as you'll remember, did not go very well for most of the cast. Deja was the only one that was safe. And the rumor was that she did a lip sync to Levitating by Dua Lipa, but it wasn't shown for some reason in the actual episode. And it was never confirmed whether this was or wasn't true, but Deja did kind of allude to it in a TikTok video, which I have talked about in one of my previous videos. Videos. But Deja recently confirmed during Bring Back My Girls that this was actually true and she really did do a solo lip sync. Did you lip sync on the Snatch Game episode? I had a solo lip sync on the episode of Snatch Game. Yes, I did. Um, even though no one really got to see it, I had my girls behind me and the entire crew of World of Wonder sat down in front and just let me have my moment. Although we never found out why it wasn't shown. And the reason I wanted to include that in this list is because Deja actually confirmed it quite recently in Bring Back My Girls. So now moving on to the third tier, we have the Asian Snatch Game Curse. This is a bit of a Drag Race theory that has been going around for a while. But on Drag Race UK, if you look at over all of the seasons, Pretty much all of the queens that got eliminated on Snatch Game were Asian. And I actually asked LaPhil about this, who appeared on season four of Drag Race UK and got eliminated on Snatch Game. And when I asked him about it, he said that because Asians aren't necessarily as prominent in the media, there isn't necessarily that many people to pull from, from for references, which means the Asians are slightly more limited in terms of who they can actually pick for Snatch Game. And that might be why Snatch Game isn't necessarily something that Asian queens are particularly strong at. And this is just a theory that's been going on for a while, so I thought I would put it on this list. And then the last one on this tier is the All Stars 3 Jury Twist. As we all remember, on All Stars 3, there was a bit of a twist that at the finale, the Eliminated Queens came back and they had to actually vote for who they wanted to go to the top two. And the fan favorite for a lot of people was Shangela, but she didn't get through. And a lot of people then said that it was rigged or that Shangela should have won. But there's a fan theory that Drag Race wanted Trixie to win, but according to the theory, 
Trixie hadn't done necessarily that well in the first half of the competition and wouldn't necessarily then have been in a winning position above someone like Shangela. So the rumor is that Drag Race created this jury twist in order to make Trixie win because Trixie had already done quite well with Wow with her uh, show with uh, Katia. So that's apparently why they did that. And obviously this has never been proven. This is just one of those wild fan theories. But when you look at it, a lot would have had to happen for Trixie not to win because, for example, Ben de la Creme eliminated herself. A lot of the queens kind of turned against Shangela or didn't vote for her for whatever reason. Uh, Morgan McNichols also was supposed to be a fan favorite, but got eliminated quite quickly and then came back and got eliminated again. So there are quite a lot of factors that had to kind of come together in order for Trixie to be in a position where she might win. So I'm not sure how much water this holds. And also this theory does kind of discredit all of the good things that Trixie did and kind of implies that she didn't deserve to win, which is obviously not very nice. So as to whether this is true, who knows? But it's an interesting theory and I thought I'd mention it because a lot of people do talk about it. Okay, so moving on to the fourth level down on the iceberg, we have the original Sherry Pie edit. Again, this is the sort of fan theory mixed with maybe a little bit of truth, but obviously we remember that on season 12, Sherry Pie got eliminated because all these allegations of abuse and manipulation came to light after filming had already happened. So the editors had to edit Sherry out of the show as much as possible. But there have been a few instances over the years where people said that the streaming platforms outside of the US got the original edit where Sherry was fully featured because she obviously made it to top four and she was quite a prominent contestant. And there have been some examples of certain scenes where you can see that Sherry was originally quite heavily featured in that scene, but then was since edited out. And so the theory is that there somewhere in the vaults of World of Wonder does exist the original Sherry Pie edit, which obviously is true. We all know they would have kept that footage, but they just didn't show it. There is also um, a rumor that's been going around and a theory that had Sherry not been disqualified, Sherry obviously got to top four. There was apparently a big storyline where Sherry and Gigi Good had a lot of confrontation and it was actually kind of a villain storyline for the two of them but and also Jada was somehow involved in it as well but then because Sherry got edited out all of that storyline had to go but that's only a rumor and I'm not sure that's ever actually been confirmed and then last on this level we have Derek Barry oh my god who did this so this is referring to an internet rumor that then turned into a joke so we all remember Derek Barry from season eight and all stars five well, there was a before Derek got on All Stars 5, there was this thing that happened in 2018 when Derek tweeted saying hashtag Derek Barry for All Stars 4 and then said, oh my God, who did this? And then someone copied that hashtag on Twitter and searched for any other tweets that used that hashtag. And the only one that used it was Derek. And so people then were kind of making out like Derek was pretending that someone else had written it when Derek was the one that actually started this hashtag. And it's since become a joke now and people use a hashtag for anything and then say, oh my God, who did this? And I think this was probably just supposed to be a joke and Derek knew that she had started this hashtag and people were going to find out. I don't think it was really meant seriously to try and lie or anything like that. I think it was just a joke, but it's since become quite a funny internet meme that whenever there's a new hashtag, people do some random hashtag and say, oh my God, who did this? Okay, so now we're moving on to the fifth tier and we have Fifi's All Stars 2 edit. So Fifi O'Hara, who now goes by the name Jeremy Carey, competed on uh, season four and All Stars 2. And you may remember that Fifi kind of became a sort of villain on All Stars 2. And there was a famous moment where Fifi or Jeremy came into the workroom after a Alyssa was eliminated and started talking badly about Alyssa. And then the other eliminated queens, including Alyssa, flashed up in the mirror behind them. And this was a really gaggy moment. And then we know obviously later on in the season, Fifi was eliminated and then didn't come to the reunion and has since kind of fallen out with World of Wonder and Drag Race and RuPaul and things like that. And Fifi was kind of known as the villain of Drag Race. 
But information has come out since then, and apparently what actually happened was that when Fifi was talking about Alyssa in the workroom, what actually happened is that other queens around the table, not just Fifi, were agreeing that Alyssa had been treated differently and preferably by the judges. And so apparently they were kind of agreeing with what Fifi was saying. It wasn't just Fifi saying it. Other people were also saying it. But then they wanted to push this narrative of Fifi versus Alyssa and this kind of rivalry. So they then cut out all of the other queens talking about Alyssa. But in reality, according to the rumors, Fifi wasn't the only one talking about Alyssa. Everyone had been saying mean things about Alyssa and almost were backing Fifi up during the arguments. But then Drag Race didn't want to show any of that because it didn't align with this narrative that they had created. One thing I forgot to mention also is that Jeremy claimed that the critiques that were negative for Alyssa were edited out and made it look like they were for Jeremy instead. So Drag Race actually did this thing where they released the full uncut version of the critiques that showed that Jeremy was lying and that they did give Alyssa negative critiques. They weren't for Jeremy. The video is no longer active. It's been deleted. But people say that it was a completely unedited video with no music or anything that showed both Jeremy and Alyssa's full critiques. And this was one of the first times ever that Drag Race had kind of actively responded to negative criticism from people and they were kind of proving Jeremy was lying effectively. And then last on this list, we have the Puerto Rico drama. So this is quite complicated. There's quite a lot of layers to this and it's mostly rumors and speculation, but I'll try and explain it in the most succinct way possible. So as we know, there's been a lot of Puerto Rican queens on Drag Race. And in the earlier seasons, there tended to be at least one or two per season. So you had people like Alexis Mateo and Yara Sofia and several other people. But the drama is that there is a rumor that has some level of credence to it, but they're not sure 100% if it is true. Puerto Rico or the queens in Puerto Rico were trying to kind of game the system in order to get more Puerto Rican queens and control who was getting onto the show. So from what I understand, how it works or how the theory is that in Puerto Rico, there are about four really powerful drag houses or sort of drag families. And the rumor is that these drag families effectively controlled the drag scene and they would decide which queens to put forward to audition for Drag Race because they knew that usually for each season at least one or two Puerto Rican queens get cast. So the rumor is, is that these drag houses were controlling who was allowed to audition from Puerto Rico. But allegedly, Madame Lequeur, who was on season four, didn't tell anybody that she had uh, auditioned and then got on the show. And allegedly, the other drag queens then in Puerto Rico were angry at Madame Lequeur for getting on the show and not telling anyone and sort of breaking this system that they had had of controlling who could audition. And other people have alleged that this is why Kenya Michaels, who was also on season four and is from Puerto Rico, was quite almost rude to Madame Lequeur because the theory is that Kenya Michaels was supposed to be the only Puerto Rican queen on season four and have a better shot at winning. But then she found out that Madame Lequeur had kind of secretly auditioned and got on. I couldn't really find any information or evidence to support this, but I did find somewhere that Linacia Sparks, who is on season five and is also from Puerto Rico, is technically, apparently, the drag daughter of Madame Lequeur, but has denied and sort of shunned Madame Lequeur as her drag mother because Madame Lequeur did this. And there's also another part, another element to the story that apparently these drag houses, what they would do is they really wanted to increase the chances of a Puerto Rican queen getting on Drag Race and also winning. So what they would do is each contestant who applied would also have a kind of buddy who they would kind of confide in and they would tell them when they got off the show what place they got, who got eliminated when, what the judges' critiques were and all that sort of thing, so that that buddy could then apply for the next season and kind of learn a lot more things and kind of have a head up in the competition. 
And so you had people like, for example, April Carry On on season six. And at one point she did wear a t-shirt that said Candy Ho on it because they're from the same drag house. And it's alleged that Candy Ho was April's buddy. And then she got on season seven and also apparently was trying this kind of villain storyline because they had this idea that April didn't last very long on season six because she was quite quiet. So they tried to then push this narrative of Candy being the villain in the hopes that she would potentially get further in the competition. And that's also why apparently Candy did that thing when she walked in and she asked Tempest du jour, how old are you? To try and push this villain storyline. Tempest, she's an old fashioned drag. She tries to be funny, I guess. Oh so how gosh. old are you? Oh, how old am I? How old? <laughs> really? But again, these are complete rumors, but this then apparently led to Drag Race found out that these Puerto Rican houses had been controlling who was auditioning and they were kind of annoyed by it. And that's why there was actually a really long break between many of the seasons kind of in the middle of Drag Race didn't have any Puerto Rican queens. Again, this is all completely alleged and it's just a fan theory, but I thought it was just really interesting. And I'm sure if you delve into it, you might be able to find some information and your own research on it. So now moving on to the sixth layer down, we have Manila's period dress. Some of you may have heard about this before and Manila has posted about this, but on All Stars 4, for one of the runways, Manila was going to wear a dress that was a kind of sanitary towel with blood on it, which was obviously to do with periods and menstruation. And Manila posted about this on her Instagram and said that this is what she wanted to wear for this runway. But apparently the Drag Race producers said that it was in quote, poor taste and they wouldn't let her wear it. And I think people were kind of shocked in a way that Manila kind of admitted this and it was one of the first times we've heard that queens were told they weren't allowed to wear a particular outfit on the runway. And we'd heard rumors about queens being told you can't wear certain things in the past, but this was one of the first sort of documented cases where a queen actually admitted to it and she also posted a picture of the kind of forbidden runway. And then last on this tier, we have Megan Trainer Sandwich. So this is something that actually happened kind of recently, which is why I'm putting it on the list. So you may remember that Megan Trainer is obviously she's an American singer, very famous. She was on an episode of season nine as a guest judge and she was wearing the unicorn onesie. And this rumor started that allegedly Megan Trainer ate a sandwich that belonged to one of the drag queens. And this rumor kind of spread as they often do. And Trinity the Tuck talked about it once on a podcast episode with Monet Exchange. And Trinity said that she didn't really get a good feeling from Megan and felt like Megan was quite disrespectful on set and didn't want to be there, according to Trinity. And Trinity also said that she heard that when they were in the break room and they had obviously the catering table with all the food, Megan Trainer came in and said, I want this sandwich. And someone said, oh, it's for one of the queens. And Megan allegedly said, well, I don't care. I'm still going to take the sandwich and then ate the sandwich. And then the drag queen who it was supposed to be for had to then go and get lunch elsewhere because Megan had eaten their lunch. And this rumor is obviously kind of sounds really ridiculous, but it spread a lot. And also one time, Arsha and Shay Coulee kind of joked about it on social media. But the reason I'm including it now in this video is because pretty recently, Shay Coulee actually admitted that she made up this rumor and it never happened. So Shay was at the Streamy Awards and Megan Trainer was also there. And Shay, and it's this, you can look up this video, I'll show a clip of it. Shay was kind of presenting at this award ceremony. And at one point, Shay walked up to Megan, who was in the audience, and basically admitted that she had joked about this rumor and kind of started it accidentally and then it kind of got out of hand and Shay admitted that it was all made up and it never happened. When you were on Drag Race as a guest judge, you ate a drag queen sandwich. sandwich. I made that rumor up and I'm so sorry. I'm, it was me and I just feel so bad and I just want to let you know I said it as a joke once on the mic. And so this is just one of those rumors that kind of spread but I thought it was interesting because it's finally been debunked by the person themselves. So now we're moving on to the penultimate level of the iceberg and we have peppermint elimination. I've talked about this on multiple other videos but we all know by now that on Drag Race 
the final three or four have to film themselves winning because they don't want to spoil it or whoever. So they make each of the contestants film themselves winning and then they only use that one edit of the queen that did win in the final broadcast to make sure no one knows who won. And the same thing is also true of eliminations. And other queens have also said the same thing, that they had to film their own sort of elimination, even though they didn't get eliminated. But Peppermint, who was on season nine, once confirmed in an interview with Joseph Shepard that for the season nine final episode before the finale, they were convinced that one of them was going to be eliminated because there had never been a top four before that. There had only been a top three. And Peppermint admitted that she was the one that actually got eliminated and she had to leave. But they also made them film a sort of four-way tie where no one got eliminated and they all went to the finale. But Peppermint was kind of convinced that she was going to be eliminated because she had filmed an elimination and none of the other three did. And she only found out that she wasn't eliminated when we all found out as well at the same time when it was broadcast on TV. And Peppermint said that when it came out on TV, she was really shocked because she didn't think she was going to get into the final four. And one of the producers called her and confirmed that she was in the final four and said, basically, get ready because we've never done anything like this. We've never had a top four and it's going to go off because it's going to be so cool. But the reason this is interesting is because we don't necessarily ever get to hear about these backstage production things when queens get eliminated. So I thought it was interesting to include on this list. And then last on this level, we have Alyssa left All Stars 2. So you may remember that on All Stars 2, there was a lot of drama, as we saw on the show, between the contestants. And one of the big storylines that they kept talking about was that Alyssa was getting sort of preferential treatment. And sometimes the judges were saying, oh, it's OK because you're Alyssa and you get away with it. And then this rumor started that Alyssa left the competition at some point to go and film something, but it never really got confirmed. But then Miley Cyrus herself confirmed in an interview, and it's unclear whether she was supposed to say this or not, but she confirmed that she actually got permission for Alyssa to leave the set of All Stars 2 so that she could go and film Miley Cyrus's VMA performance with the House of Edwards. Well, Alyssa Edwards was filming All Stars and they let her off set just to come do this performance. Miley explained in the video that she had seen the House of Edwards perform at the Drag Race finale, the season before and she really loved them and wanted them to be part of her VMAs and so she got permission for Alyssa to kind of be snuck out during the filming of All Stars 2 to go and do this performance and there's also another layer to the rumor that I found online that said that Miley Cyrus originally asked for permission for Alyssa to come and film this VMA thing but allegedly the Drag Race producers said no but because obviously Miley Cyrus is Miley Cyrus and she was performing at the VMAs, which is owned by MTV. And at the time, Drag Race was still on Logo and they're owned by the same parent company. So apparently Miley Cyrus went over the Drag Race producer's head and went straight to the head of the network and the head of the network agreed and let Alyssa leave All Stars 2 filming so that she could go and do this VMA thing. And again, this part of the rumor hasn't been confirmed, but there are perhaps some elements that might suggest that it is true. Okay, so now we're on the final level of the iceberg, which basically means the most obscure or weird things. And these two things are quite weird. So the first one is Jinx is a furry. So this one is a total weird thing that happened in the fandom. So if any of you don't know, a furry is someone, it's a, it's a subset or a group of people who enjoy dressing up as what they call anthropomorphic animals. So animals that kind of look and act like humans and they wear sort of like these suits. And there's also a kind of sexual connotation to do with this community as well. And this fan theory started that Jinx is a furry. And the way it seemed to start from what I could find is that Jinx posted a photo of a dog, which is a cartoon, and said that this was her and how she was feeling. And someone asked, oh, are you a dog? And then Jinx said, well, furries have feelings too. And then later on, Jinx tweeted saying, confirming that she is a furry. And so now people have these ideas that Jinx is a furry and enjoys doing some kind of sexual things to do with the furries. But this part hasn't been confirmed. I'm not sure if it was just a joke, but it's definitely one of the really weird fan theories that are out there. So that's why I put it on this level of the iceberg. 
And the final one for this iceberg is Nina West's foot fetish. So there's this weird rumor or fan theory, I suppose, that started saying that Nina West, who was on season 11, has a foot fetish. And the reason that this started is because Nina did a performance in Liverpool in the UK, I believe it was. And at one point she invited this guy, I think his name is Matt, great name, uh, who is one of the Brit crew members. So one of the pit crew, but for the UK. And he was invited up onto stage. And there is footage of this happening. It's, it's from a YouTube channel. And Nina did this performance with the song Foot Fetish, or she talked about Foot Fetish. And she sort of touches this guy's foot. And at one point she puts the foot in her mouth and sucks his toes. <laughs> And it's obviously quite an unusual video. We don't know whether Nina genuinely has a foot fetish. Obviously, if she does, that's up to her. But it's kind of just become one of those really, really weird fan theories. And now people always say that Nina West must have a foot fetish. And there is evidence apparently out there in this performance. <laughs> So there was part two of the Drag Race Iceberg with more unknown drama secrets and fan theories about Drag Race that you may not have known about. Let me know in the comments if you knew about any of these before and which ones surprised you the most. And also let me know if there are any other theories or anything you want me to include in any future videos. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye! And I'd also like to give a special shout out to my newest Patreon in the highest tier, which is Rochelle. Thank you very much, Rochelle. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. In the You're a Winner Baby tier, we have Emerald1508, PC Smush, Christian and Ethan. And then in the Shantae You Stay tier, we have Charlie, David, Becky, Craig, Max, Kylie, Amy and Linda. You are all absolute legends and your support really does make such a massive difference to my channel so thank you all so so much. If you'd like to join my Patreon and get exclusive benefits such as early access to my videos, shout outs in my videos as well as priority access when submitting interview questions among other benefits, you can join my Patreon for just a few dollars a month to unlock these amazing benefits and I'll put a link in the description. Please make sure you like, comment and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!